Hi everyone and welcome to part two of a seven part series in honor of National Marriage Week USA. Please check out the website nationalmarriageweekusa.org for more information, especially if you are in your marriage for a long haul. It supports and defends the sanctity of marriage and gives you tools and has media events and many events going on around the country. So between February 7th and 13th, I will be doing one video per day. It will premiere at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'd love to hear what you think on each of the topics that I'll be discussing. The first two nights will be on pornography. So this is night two. And I recently released a book, Porn Free, How to Decrease the Demand for Pornography. It's available on Amazon. I would like to talk about the top three tips or secrets in raising a porn-free child. Now, in my book, I have at least 10 ways, and because I want each video to be less than 15 minutes, I will discuss three tonight. Number one, what you wanna do is raise a well-rounded child. Now, this is a very wide open and vague concept, and of course, that's probably what you're doing. But number one, be very careful in giving your kid a cell phone or a tablet. What this does is pacify a child sometimes. Yes, you need to be in communication with your children, your preteens, your younger child, older kids. The problem is that we are in a culture that is has even less long-term attention. When I was younger, we can focus for 20 minutes. And now it just seems like everything is getting down and down, chunked down into five to 10 seconds. Even branding marketers will tell you, you've got to capture people's attention in three or four seconds or you might lose them. What happens is our devices become our main entertainment and immediate gratification. And we're hitting buttons and we're getting a response, checking text, getting a response. Everything is very quick, very impulsive. And gaming can train a young child to do what pornography capitalizes on. You hit a button, you're curious, you see the images, the videos, and you wanna go back for more. And so this dopamine hits, you're setting your child up. So be very, very careful as you raise your child with the amount of screen time or tablet time that they're doing. And the other thing too that I uh, discussed in a longer podcast recently, you can check it out, Integrity Restored Podcast, episodes 147, 148, and 149, especially episode 149 where I talk about this in more depth, but I do mention the word violence. We are having more and more violence in the gaming that the children play, or especially your young adult guys. I will say men are more drawn toward some of the video games with the shooting and the violence and all of that. I try to keep it cut down. Sometimes it's hard to eliminate everything entirely. We are really surrounded by violence. And I say violence because violence pops up in pornography and is very much a part of people who get into the advanced porn habits or addictions. All right, so raising a round, uh, well-rounded child involves exposing your kids to different activities, drum lessons, music lessons, soccer or sports, art, family vacations that might involve camping or adventure, going to new places, just quantity and quality time with your children away from those gaming devices, away from isolated individual time. Excessive individual isolated time is time where the, the pornographers can try to sneak in to your child's life. And so raising a well-rounded child, I would say would be one of the first things you can do as a parent to try to help ward off pornography. Pornography enters a person's life because they're curious, maybe they're bored, maybe they feel abandoned or lonely. It, it's just a habit that people can stumble into very easily, very easily, especially with the with those, um, the devices, the virtual reality is, uh, is not gonna be good news 
as far as people falling into a porn habit or addiction. Number two, develop a close rapport with your child. I would say a good physical relationship, starting at birth, breastfeeding, cuddles, time with your kids, snuggling, having them come in to your bedroom late at night to have conversations. Uh, I did this with my children. We had a king size bed and later in the evening is when the busy day we were winding down and they would come in and we would like laugh and we would talk and we would we would just uh, be a gathering point. Close physical relationship and rapport takes time as well. It's a big bonus if the uh, husband and wife, mother and father, could be home for at least one meal a day, dinner, conversation, maybe prayer time, whatever your family wanted to do together. Sometimes after dinner, our family would take a family walk around the block. We would just go out for 15 minutes. A couple of the little kids on their tricycles or bikes, a couple of us walking, just some time together outside the home, away from devices or screens or anything like that. Just attention together. So a good rapport is meaning you are available for your child. Sometimes you might want to get stuff done in the home. You're, you're busy paying bills. Maybe you're in the kitchen. Maybe you want to go to sleep early. Sometimes those young teens are not ready to talk to you when you want to talk to them. So be available. Oftentimes in the car, you will end up striking good conversations late at night. So be available for rapport so that if your child does stumble across something, they will know they can trust you, they feel comfortable with you. Hey, mom, I saw something that was kind of weird. And so then you have, you have more open conversations when you develop a family of, of rapport that you know, that they know they could come to you with a problem, with a situation, with a question, with any, any type of concern. In developing a rapport, you also are more likely to be listened to back and forth. As far as your relationship with your child, it's important that you're able to have difficult conversations. I like to say that the parent should be the first to introduce pornography awareness. Not pornography, but pornography awareness to your child at age appropriate. And my book doesn't go into details of that because there are many organizations that have that all set up. Defend Young Minds, Exodus Cry, Fight the New Drug, Culture Reframed. Many of these organizations are experts in educating children at different ages. Guidance and books on how to do it if you feel you need the guidance. Also, if you are feeling timid about discussing pornography with your child, maybe the husband or the wife, one or the other, might feel more comfortable. And that's okay to, it's okay to be uncomfortable about it, but try to make yourself a little more comfortable about it because guess what? If you are not teaching your child or telling them about porn and the dangers of it, then somebody else will. And they might follow the guidance of somebody else and go down the wrong path. And so we don't want that. In raising a porn-free child, we want to do all that we can to try to protect our kids. Can we 100% protect our children? I don't think so. And leave your comments uh, below as to what your experience was or what you think that we can do. The third thing we can do is develop a strong marriage husband and wife being friends, husband and wife being comfortable with each other, husband and wife showing physical touches or hugs or kisses. Your child needs to grow up with a sense of strength in, in validity in who they are. And if they're comfortable, if they see a happy mom and dad, then maybe it, it will relax them and they will have something to model after when they are young adults into adulthood. As far as just a feeling, feeling that they, they are important in the family unit, that they are worthy, that they are loved. Pornography is, is a habit and an addiction of, of like an intimacy disconnect. People seek things because they need soothing. They want soothing. They're, there's something missing. There's a void, a void in their heart. And a strong marriage can help remedy uh, 
a sadness or, or a void that a child could feel. This is why divorce is a very difficult thing. Bad marriages are, are a very difficult environment for children to grow up in. Uh, so if you can do those three things, and again, let me know what, what are your thoughts on this. In my book, I go into a lot more uh, equally important tips for raising a porn-free child. Well, my time is about up. Uh, thank you for joining me. If this is your first time on this channel, I welcome you. You'll see that I have at least three main topics on my YouTube channel. It's marriage, childbirth, and swimming, and whatever else comes my way. And of course, the topic of pornography has recently been added to this channel as well. So have a great day and make your marriage great.